Ernest and Donna Hancock run a radio show together in Phoenix, Arizona. They also have a news service called freedomsphoenix.com. In their yard they have chickens and they're growing their own vegetables. Their main focus right now is their aquaponic system. They made a completely self-sustainable aquaponic system which runs on solar generators. Their idea was that they could pack up their system at any time and be able to put it anywhere and get their own food, power, and clean water. Um, the fish that we chose, the tilapia, was because they're a Nile fish. They have you know low oxygen, it's a lot of heat, it's just like Phoenix. So Egypt, Cairo is Phoenix. So these fish come from the same kind of environment that they'll be in here. You know, the main thing that we had this water feature was here when we first moved here and we wanted to make use of it. And so what we did is we just have a sump pump that pumps it into that top pipe that feeds the aqua dome and then it returns here. Well, we also have the waterfall area that we can use. We're going to be doing plants up here. Now it's just a sump pump, but there's another method called an airlift that we're using over there to where you create a a uh, pocket of air bubble like just little aerators for uh, fish aquariums and that air bubble lifts the water up and it uses only about 15 to 20 percent of the energy so we're probably going to go to that but we needed to condition the water over months to uh, do our little bacteria experiment because what happens it's the ammonia created by the fish that goes into the beds and the bacteria breaks down one I think it's nitrites first then another bacteria breaks it down into nitrates that feed the plants and then it cleans the water and then it comes back into the fish creating a, a loop that sustains everybody. When the water comes in from the pond, it goes into a tank at the bottom here that another pump goes up and supplies each one of these three main grow beds. Now, these plants, we had for months, the water had been uh, doing its thing with the ammonia from the fish and from the bacteria in here. So when we planted these plants a week ago, they were half this size. They went stupid right away. So what happened is we, we learned that we could do a lot more plants. We're afraid that we don't have enough plants to clean the water for the fish. So we're, you know, keep adding on more plant. We have like 200 and something plant places that, you know, uh, uh, holders for the plants. So we're just getting, we're about a third there. Now the water pumps up into these beds and then they have what's called a bell siphon. A bell siphon, when the water, you want it to circulate, it goes up into the tank, then it siphons and drains all the way down, fills up down about every 15 minutes. And uh, you'll have to look up bell siphon and to see how it works. It's hard to explain without me showing you, but bell siphon on YouTube, you see that, that is cool. The, the Egyptian that thought that up gets a gold star because that one was, I can see where that could be a benefit for a lot of things. I wish I'd been taught that in school when I was a kid, you know, so I got to use it a bunch of times. Now, this main one here, when it fills up and drains, it goes into the floating beds. Then when the floating beds are, you know, over full, they go back into this and this uh, tank, when it gets too high, it goes back to the uh, pond. Now there's another tank over here we'll show later, but this is the main system. The water comes in from the pond, it's distributed throughout the grow beds and the float tanks, then it goes back to the pond for recharge. That's it. When we first planned on doing this, we went to a Prepper Fest event that we had our uh, money dome up and we were there and I got to meet a lot of people and one of the guys there had a thing called the HOPE system and it's H2OPE and it stands for Water Purification and Energy. So he's had a, um, a water store in Las Vegas and he created this himself and he has all kinds of different sizes. It's HOPE systems. You just go look that up online, man. It is awesome. They've got little suitcase ones, big ones, little ones. This you can put up to three large um, marine lead acid batteries in there. You can get lithium ion, you can do all kinds of stuff, whatever battery you want. But what it does is it has quick connects on here. You just connect to connect it. You just go bam and it's done. 
You know, it, it is amazing how fast and easy this works. And I'll show you the two compartment sink that we're doing and how we're going to be using that to have powered water. I need pressurized water because I want to do everything out here. I'll rinse my plants off, I'll get prepare them, eat them, got a table, everything. But I needed pressurized water. Now this purifies water also. I can throw that hose into a swamp and it goes through, it has reverse osmosis, it has an ultraviolet, it has a carbon filter, it does alkaline. I mean it's amazing what it does. But it also pumps water. We could do irrigation, we could do um, a filtration, we do shower with it. We go up to you know, the Jackalope Freedom Festival, we use this for powering everybody's phones and everything, and power the showers, okay? Well, what happens is, this is mobile, it just has a handle that pulls out and it's got wheels, and you just go. So, what we used it for, for months in the summer, this powered the entire dome. The problem was, is that the roll out solar panels that we had, as the sun went down in the winter time, I didn't have a place to put them you know, that it was getting enough sun. So we may hang them off the dome itself. So that's what we're probably gonna do. So we unplugged it because we need to hook up the plumbing into the sink system and do it. But I ran this for months when there was no sun and there was a, a weather system in for like three or four days, the power of the batteries was able to run this entire system the entire time. So the reason for the HOPE system is if I take the domes down, put it on a trailer, this entire system can fit on my little trailer along with this power system and I show up somewhere, I got food, I got purified water, I got pressurized water, I got power. I'm freaking, who wants me in their bug out, you know? That's why. <laughs> the whole purpose of this was to be able to be self-sustaining. Now that was kind of the point. I wanted my grandchildren to eat well, to have, you know, know how food goes. They helped me. Every Monday they come over and we spend at least an hour working on the dome. You know, the aqua dome. We're going to go work on the dome. So they understand and see, they think this is normal. So they're just my, one of my sons just bought a home in the backyard. They have an area, they're putting in the aquadome. So, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the grow beds and so on, the aquaponics. Now, the table here, this is just a four by eight sheet of plywood that we put in and it's supported by the same condo EMT that we're uh, using for the dome that supports this. And this thing is strong. Well, we put the HOPE system in to power. I rinse out all my vegetables. I get them all prepped. Heck, I'm gonna, I got the power. I'm gonna do my juicing right freaking here. But the reason we did it this way is a camera goes right there and it hooks into my radio television show. So we can come out here during the four minute breaks and the eight minute breaks between the hours and we can do all the farming and by the end of the show, of the three hour show that we do, I'm done with my farming for the day and I don't have to do additional video work. It's part of the show. I have a wireless mic, the uh, video feeds into my switcher and I'm done. And we got these verticals because these hard points on the, the dome are so strong, you, I, I can hang from these. You, you should get a picture of me hanging from them. So, and we have these strawberries. Uh, we got this from the idea of somebody on uh, YouTube that had made these out of strawberries. And all this is is PVC drain pipe that you cut every eight inches on both sides in a heat gun and you just press it and form it. And then we painted it to make it look cool because it's got to be cool. So these are part of the 200 plant areas that we have, the sink, the camera, the mic, it's all inspiration for everybody to grow food. Now this whole area that's is on two summers ago was where we had a garden and I spent most of my time weeding. It was amazing, it grew really fast, but there was a lot of maintenance in it. This, I hope, is not gonna be any maintenance and because it's in a circle, it's ergonomic. It's easy and I don't have to move that much to do a bunch of work. But one of the things that we wanted to do, the HOPE system worked great, but the sump pumps use a lot of electricity. So we found another way, it's called an airlift system. It's just air like you use for, um, you know, aerating water for fish. And what it does is that pump makes an air bubble at the bottom of this. And then we have, you know, some of these pipes, you know, 10 foot high pipes that lift the air bubble, lifts the water up and it goes into the top tanks. And that's how we're going to have the water distributed through the vertical growing and into the tanks and so on is from this airlift pump. The reason is, is it only uses like 15, 20% of the energy. So if we're trying to go off grid or use a uh, uh, solar or something like that, 
you know, this was a really cool idea. Plus it came with a nether growing system. And we put this bird netting on because the birds, when we started planting, I just know they're gonna come. So I just wanted to make sure, you know. But uh, this, the water comes into the top here and it just flows back and forth. And we can do a lot of plants here and also start our seedlings and different things. And then of course the water drains back into the tank. So the airlift, that's another thing to look up along with the bell siphon is to look for airlift pump and you'll see how that works and how much less energy it uses and uh, just a, another way to grow and operate this without using a whole bunch of energy. Now one of the ways that you can filter just to get the big chunks out coming from the fish pond is called a swirl filter. Now the way we did this one is the water comes in and then it'll fill up and it has a pipe that goes in like this and the drain will come out you know the water will fill up here and then it'll go into this and come into the system and that way we've eliminated a lot of the solids. The solids go to the bottom, we have fresh water from the top that goes in, goes into here. It's a really easy way to do it and one of the benefits of this is the solids go into the tank at the bottom and we have a drain off to the side of the tank here that we just open that every now and then, flush out all the that real the heavy solids and so on and we put that on our favorite plants and trees and such and they get extra. I wanted to find out a lot more about aquaponics. These systems fascinated me, so I tracked down endless food systems in Arizona to find out maybe about getting a home unit. Hi, I'm Chad Hudsmith with Endless Food Systems, and I actually grew up on a dairy farm, uh, grew a lot of crops there, but upon graduating college went to uh, the roofing business and was involved with that heavily for 10 or 12 years and wanted to do something that would you know really change the world i saw uh, these fish powered gardens and i thought man this is the solution to world hunger and so started looking into it started growing a couple different kind of uh, ways and discovered that this is so much better than the conventional way that i i grew up gardening you know leaning over and weeding and all that and how much do you water and how much food do you give the plants and this thing is completely automatic, so I just thought this has got to be the best. So this is our fish tank, it's about 300 gallons. In a fish powered garden, we're really relying on the fish to provide the nutrition or the waste for the plants. So it really doesn't matter what kind of fish you use. We have tilapia in here because they handle hot water and in Phoenix it gets pretty hot. But if uh, you're in a northern climate where it gets cold, trout would be good. So we have a water pump that pulls the water from the fish tank over into the grow beds and you can plant just about anything you want. There's really only a very few plants that don't do well in aquaponics. Uh, potatoes and carrots are about the only thing. This is Swiss chard right here and this will grow for a couple of years. You just cut off uh, a stalk as close as you can to the base and it's really good just raw in your salad or you can uh, stir fry it with an onion or something. But just about any kind of leafy green or vegetable will grow in these beds. So you don't have a lot of room. No problem. Chad offers these smaller units. So the fish tank is where the fish live and their waste is pulled up by a water pump into the top. These pebbles filter that water and take the waste and convert, actually there's red worms in here that convert that over into a nitrate that the plants can absorb for food. This is our small tabletop version. It's good for maybe one beta fish and for herbs and things like that. But it's a decorative model and once again, it's completely self-cleaning so you never have to clean your water or, or the pebbles. The tricks to making these work really well is called an auto siphon. It's a fairly complex thing but basically there's a upstand here where the water overflows. This is called the bell. It goes around it and there's an air pocket created at the top when the water begins to overflow. It creates a suction uh, called a siphon. And then this is just a media guard that goes around the whole thing and keeps the pebbles and anything from getting in there and stopping it up. We had several customers asking for an off-grid package, a way to power these things without electricity. And so this lid is adjustable depending on the angle of the sun. And we just mount the uh, solar panel right to the lid. There's a charge controller on the side over here and a battery on the ground. 
The battery can also be used as a backup system if you didn't have a solar panel uh, but you were concerned that maybe your power goes off then your pumps would quit. It automatically kicks on a, a 12 volt pump. So this is our raft bed. It's just a piece of styrofoam and the roots of the plants hang down straight into the water. These are best for lettuces, leafy greens, anything that's uh, fast growing and small. So you'd want to grow maybe like tomatoes and Swiss chard things that have a long life in your gravel beds, but anything uh, small and fast growing in your raft beds. Once I discovered these fish powered gardens and how powerful they were that they could feed the world, I uh, really wanted to manufacture a kit so that people could be self-sustained right at their house because that was the really the powerful thing to me is that a person could take you know a small area maybe 12 by 20 feet right in their backyard or in their garage and grow pretty much all their own food and to me that's just amazing. With our large systems people usually grow outside in a greenhouse or something like that. You can grow indoors using any kind of lights like a T5 light uh, but it's going to take quite a bit of electricity so you could use either a solar tube which is like a um, thing you mount on the roof and it directs the light down or you know, grow outside in a greenhouse. I hope you enjoyed that. Just remember, this is a segment out of a full documentary. If you wanna watch the whole documentary, all you have to do is click right here, and you can see it in its entirety. Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over and sign up at terranlupo.com and all that's free. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Also, give this a thumbs up, a like, a share, or if you have something to add, remember to comment below. Thanks.